OK, well, I'm delighted to be joined by former Peter United defender Simon Ray. Um, Simon, first and foremost, we just had a conversation off camera. Um, and I suppose the simple question is, are you keeping safe and, and healthy at this moment in time? Yeah, um, boredom's kicking in. I mean, what are we now? Week seven, something like that, maybe longer. Um, going through the usual processes of the new social distancing, trying to keep me and the missus and the family safe. Uh, unfortunately, that means having a little one running around, causing chaos, but I've tried to strangle about 20 times. <laughs> they, don't, they don't put that in the laws, do they, with the social distancing? <laughs> um, in terms of your uh, career at Peterborough United, obviously you joined um, from Birmingham. What can you remember about that um, particular transfer and how it came about? Um, honestly, I was going nowhere fast at Birmingham. I probably stayed there two or three years too long, trying to get into a first team I, I wasn't going to get into. Um, and Barry had sent someone to watch Howard Forrington. Uh, we think we played Hensford Town, Hensford Town at the time. Um, he ended up signing H, um, and then called me and said, "I mean, get yourself along as well." I wasn't. I don't think he was quite up to speed with my situation. Obviously, me knowing him for a lot of years, um, and then got myself over. I couldn't wait to do it. Uh, and when you're not getting in someone's first team, and you get to that. 19, 20, 21 in age, and I was older than that, I was 23. Um, you, you kind of lose your way and you become comfortable and you sometimes forget what you're supposed to be doing and trying to play first team football, um, which is looking back a bit of regret that I didn't put another 100 games playing for someone, um, wherever it might have been. Uh, but it worked out, went to Barry and um, couldn't have asked for a better six months leading from there, follow on from that, Wembley and promotion. Um, what was um, Barry like to you as a defender? Because obviously I've spoke to so many players that played for him um, as an attacking player and there wasn't much, much advice. It was go out, express yourself, enjoy it, etc, etc. Obviously when it comes to the defensive side of thing, I guess the coaches were doing more of that type of thing with you. Yeah, um, Wayne Turner at the time was very good how he, how he moved the uh, thought process from uh, chaotic at times, um, lots of changes, and there was a lot more stability, a lot more understanding of each other's jobs, the direction we wanted to go in, how we wanted to play. Um, and I think that was quite evident from the results we got and where we ended up. So I'm pretty sure without Wayne, we'd have never done it. Um, and Barry was Barry uh, the whole time. Um, sometimes you saw him in the week, sometimes you didn't. Sometimes you knew what was going on, sometimes you didn't. And um, People say that Barry was this, Barry that, but for me, it, it, you, I knew where you stood. You, you did your job. You didn't mess around. You didn't make as few mistakes as you could possibly make, and um, and you got on with it. You know what I mean? And if you're having a bad time, you'd be out. If you're having a bad time over a period of time, he would have no hesitation, as you'll know, signing two or three people in your position, and you'd have to fight for your place. And at one point, I think there was five centre-halves, six centre-halves, um, and you had to fight for your place. Sometimes through luck, through injury, sometimes suspension, sometimes you had to wait to get it back. But you knew where you stood with Baz. Um, did he make it hard for you as a defender, all out attack, three changes at once? Yeah, of course he did. But, you know what I mean, he gave you a chance, and he gave me a chance. Uh, that's all I can ask you of him, you know what I mean? And what I did with it after that was up to me. Um, I got a few bad injuries. You know what I mean? Got suspended. Nothing to do with Barry. You know what I mean? It was, um, it was, uh, it was a chance and opportunity that you need, and he gave it me. Mm. The, the the playoffs, uh, bizarrely, and it might make you feel incredibly old. It's twenty years, obviously, this year, um, and everyone talks about the final. Obviously, the playoff against Barnet. Um, we talk about David Fowler's hat trick in the second leg, but going into that first leg, what was the mentality like in terms of? Um, did you believe you were going to go to Barnet in that first leg and win, or was it a case of setting it up for the second leg? Twenty years ago, I really can't remember the the team talk. If I'm being honest, um, I I always remember going into it that we were a little bit surprised. A little bit because we came from quite deep from um, from um, and we were happy to be there and there wasn't a great deal of pressure I don't remember um, 
for me personally, oh, I couldn't believe my luck. I'd been playing in the reserves and all of a sudden um, playing an important game. Um, but in general, there was no there was no pressure. So we went out there. Um, and again, for men, we pretty much had it all our own way. Mm. Uh, time with the goals. You know I mean, how we did stuff. Um, and, and it went away. And then the second leg, I mean... We couldn't have asked for anything more, you know. I mean, we were tired. We, we everyone to a man was was on point, um, and confidence was good. And momentum, yeah, it was it was with us. Uh, but I just the, the the outstanding memories. There was no pressure. And looking back on it now, you know I mean, there probably should have been a little bit. But coming up late like we did, it's always always kind of a bonus thing. So. Yeah, I might have had that wrong a little bit, but from memory, that's how I uh, that's how I remember it. it. Always amuses me when I speak to players of that generation, the Dave Fowler hat trick, and what a wonderful hat trick was in the second leg. And he, he, I think he went home and had a pizza, and that's how that was Dave Fowler in terms of his celebrations. But for players that were involved in getting to Wembley, particularly for someone like yourself, as you say, that you you only just joined the football club, you must be thinking, wow, this is this is going to be an incredible experience for me. Yeah, um, like I said, you take it. Um, for what it is as well. Uh, when, once you, once you're playing football and, and you're not getting anywhere, and, and you and you really struggle to see what the next thing is, and then something like that comes along, you you, you grasp it and you and you and you you remember what it was like six months ago and where you are now. And I remember walking out at Wembley thinking, "Wow, I mean, I couldn't have even pictured this six months ago. Getting nowhere." Um, and I did, really did appreciate it at the time. And um, I can picture myself now, as you're saying it, walking down the tunnel, taking it in, the lads surrounding me, um, and really having that sense of um, accomplishment that I got myself out of rut, got one more place in the team and, and contributed to a, a, a result that I mean, went down in history. Um. Obviously, Marco Gabbiadini was the Darlington striker. Did you and Eagle have a conversation beforehand on who was going to take him, or was it a case of because he, he was the, the big man? Was <laughs> no, that sort of stuff. Probably Eagle mentioned something, but it's it, it's all a bit of a blur. It, you just do what's in front of you. Yeah, yeah. You cover each other. You talk. I mean, yeah, you organise. You put your blocks in. I mean. From memory as well, I, mean, I think I watched it about 10 years ago. Um, we got a little bit of luck, titles, had to pull a few saves out. I think I made the block and won it in my hand and no one spotted it, something like that. Um, and then Clarkie did what he did, poked it one in and you come away on a, on a very rainy night. That I mean, I think we deserved it in the end, but that Dar um, Darlington probably say the same, that they should have come away with something. So it's... It's a, it's a it's a situation that all of us I think appreciated afterwards from coming mid table all the way up um, and the celebrations afterwards were were brilliant. It's something I remember forever. Did you know where to put your medal afterwards? Have you got your medal somewhere safe or is it? Yeah, it's in the attic, I think. Um, I couldn't tell you which box though, but it's up there. Uh, so my son watched it, um, watched the highlights of it probably six months ago, and asked me how I ever played football because I was so slow. Um, and I said, I oh, don't worry about it. The camera's, the camera's in there. Uh, the camera's all distorted, mate. <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't do it, could I? <laughs> uh, well, to be fair, everyone I've spoken to about Wembley mentioned the fact it was chucking down with rain and the shirts were so big that they, they were so hard to, um, you know, when, when you took them off at the end, it felt like it was a, a mammoth achievement to do that. I mean, they were, they were big shirts, weren't they? They were big shirts, but not so big on me. And, uh, I had more issues being skin tight than baggy, especially the shorts. <laughs> I mean, moving forward from there, obviously going into the, the next division, there was a big turnover of players as it continued throughout the years. You, you played with some really interesting characters. Um, Stephen Thompson, who I'm going to be speaking to next, actually, um, Scottish midfielder, obviously played in your side. Fanny, we spoke to off camera, Helgi Danielson. Jimmy Bullard obviously was someone who was there at that sort of time. Was he someone that you actually enjoyed? Because you were a bit of a character yourself and he was, well, bonkers. Jimmy in particular? Mm. Yeah, Jimmy was... Jimmy was lively, put it that way. 
Um, but it came from a similar situation from what I came from. Maybe didn't stay in it as long as I did. Uh, wasn't getting anywhere, got released. Um, and through all of it, as much as he messed around and um, it, it caused chaos at times, uh, but he, he did extra. You know what I mean? And that's what didn't, people didn't see. He did extra. He went out of the leg weights. He did his quick feet. He practiced his free kicks. He, he did what he did to move on to the next stage. And a lot of people don't mention that, but they just mention the lunatic that he was at times. But that was part and parcel of, of why everyone likes him, why everyone remember him, where he is now, what he's accomplished now. Um, and he, uh, he came from a diff difficult situation and, and grasped it. You know what I mean? And, I would have said for that two years, he's probably going to go down as one of Peter's best midfielders ever. You know what I mean? Um, but he worked hard as well as, you know what I mean, what, us wanting to slap him a few times. But, I mean, that was, that's who he made. That's what made him. In terms of other players you played with during your, your Peter career, who else sort of stands out as either the closest person to you in terms of a friendship group or someone that you really remember because of what they were like off the pitch? Um... I think from a personal point of view, H, because we came from Birmingham together. Um, we, we spent a bit of time at Peterborough. We lived in Leamington. We lived opposite each other for three years. Um, we went to Redditch together after we, uh, after it was all coming to an end. Um, so from a personal point of view, H, uh, but people like Leon, Jason, um, David Oldfield, who helped me, and Steve Castle, Eagle, the, I mean, these, these two of them were at Birmingham when I was there. Bully as well was always very close. I mean, Faz. I, it could go on and on, you know what I mean? And as we got there, Gilly, Shieldsy, Jelly, Helgi. I always liked Helgi. I, I thought he was an exceptional player that could have gone further. Um, so the list is endless. And, and people have asked me this before. It's rare or, well, rare is the right word, but you've got to get lucky to have a good changing room. Um, and we had one for a long time through Jason, Leon, Clarkie, Eagle, David Oldfield, Fozzie, um, Gilly, Shields. There, there was a good dressing for a long time and not many bad eggs. And um, to be quite honest, bad eggs didn't last long with Baz anyway. So, um, personally, H, but in general, I mean, Leon, Jason, all them boys stuck out th through being good Good lads, you know what I mean? Up for a fight. Um, and I wouldn't have had it any other way. I mean, because I've been in some bad dressing rooms uh, where no one talks to each other, no one wants to know each other. Um, and it drags, you know what I mean? It drags, it drags you down. It, it shows on the pitch. Um, and I don't think with the resources we had at Peterborough, we could have finished mid-table a lot of the time without forcing them things. You know what I mean? So... Yeah, I'm, I'm fortunate. I, I class myself as fortunate to have a good dressing room for a lot of years and um, some good people in it. Yeah, and obviously going up a level as well, you had different kind of challenges in terms of the opposition you faced. Were you someone that relished that kind of opportunity to sort of test yourselves against, you know, a higher standard of player? Uh, absolutely. And again, I'll go back to what I came from. You know what I mean, um, playing reserve team football um, for three or four years, it, it, it doesn't mean anything. No one remembers it. No one can tell you anything about it. Um, and then to, to relish, me relishing going into those challenges, the league above, trying to finish mid-table, trying to push on, you know what I mean? Trying to keep your place um, through injuries and illness and everything. All of these are challenges that every day you've got to, you've got to push through. Um, and it, it made, makes you who you are. You know what I mean? It, it makes you put your body on the line. It makes you clear one off the other line with your head and get booted. It makes you play on through when your leg's strapped up all the way to your, your, your knee. You know what I mean? It makes you play with two strappings on both ankles or all this sort of stuff that all the boys did on a regular basis. Um, it, it, you appreciate it and you, and you want the new challenges and you want to play against as good as people as you can. But to do that, you've got to keep your place and you've got to, you've got to keep your attitude and, 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 your, and your willingness to, to keep pushing forward. I think you scored eight goals during your, your um, posh career that I can, that I can find. Um, were you someone that, as I as a, say find, I mean, I'm going, on, I'm going on the stats rather than delving into the, uh, the video. I yeah, I mean, were you someone that relished the opportunity to, to try and cause havoc at the other end? Um, 
I won't, go, I won't go as far as Havoc. Um, I scored a lot more when I was younger, but I, I, I'd imagine that's the same for, for most people. I was in a new team at Birmingham where I scored 27 from centre-half, you know what I mean? And that's why I made my debut up front for Birmingham with Steve Claridge. I mean, and I was, I was back and forth with, Pete, uh, with Peterborough for a bit, and I think Baz remembered that. But, um, I mean, I probably should have scored more, but again, everyone can say that, can't they? Um, I wish I had done. Um, and for memory, I can't imagine. I can't remember scoring too many important goals. I mean, I can remember one against Brentford that was in the first thirty seconds that kicked us off. I can remember scoring one at Notts County, and that was that won the game. But the rest were pretty much in the in a general flow of the game. So, mm. yeah, eight goals. I'll take it, but we should have been more. Um, I, I don't like to bring up the red card at Cardiff, but um, it was pretty quick, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I, I think I remember it a lot different from other people, um, and I'm probably in the minority. But it was, I think it was like 10 seconds, wasn't it? Mm. Or, ten, or nine and a half seconds of they did it, and it went down as the fastest ever, or, or after Pressman, or something like that, the fastest outfield player. But honestly, I, it's just all a blur. I remember the one memory I do have, if I've got it correct, is that the ref just come over and smiled at me. And said, oh, I've got no choice. You got to go. And I was, well, I remember walking in that change room and I think, you know, literally just finished warming up. And I had to go into the Cardiff crowd in my tracksuit and watch the game getting pelted with everything physically, abuse, coins, verbals, everything. And I've got 90 minutes left and one nil down, two nil down. 3-0 down. I remember Baz looking around, shaking his head at me. I remember walking in afterwards and just the one thinking, I'm not going to hide. I'm just going to sit there, take it as a, on the chin. And I got hammered. I got absolutely hammered. And um, losing 3-0 and it was a long afternoon for the boys. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's one of the few things that, uh, that I can laugh about, to be honest. Mm. I think you ended up making around about 170 odd appearances for the football club, which actually, when you think about it, is quite a, a tremendous achievement. A, given the fact that for first team experience prior to when you joined, you didn't have a lot, and to, to be consistent and play the amount of games you did per season over a period of time, you must have been, give, given the fact you picked up a few injuries, happy with, with how regular you were. Yeah, um, that was down to a few factors. One, I, I played through a lot of pain at times, um, you had to do it. There was so much competition. I, I wanted to keep my place. Um, wherever I could, I played through it um, to, to, to get that run of games. Um, and the competition from the continual lads being brought in as well always made you train a bit harder. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, just put that little bit extra in. Um, and I always felt that, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm right about this, not that... I mean, what Baz will say, I don't know. But Baz was always looking to sign a left centre half, always, either Arbs, Brano, someone like that that could give a bit more balance. And I was always a lad on the left because I was reasonably comfortable on it. Um, and Mark Joseph came in for a bit, even though he wasn't a lefty. Um, and I always felt that he was looking to get someone else in there. But due to injuries, suspensions, me playing, form, up, down. I managed to keep my place for one reason or another um, until the last season where my media went and I, I just couldn't get back into to what was going. But I always felt I contributed well through most of the seasons um, and um, kept my place reasonably well I mean, when I had to. So combinations of that, I mean, the amount of times I played with my ankles, both ankles strapped or, I mean, cuts, bruises and everything else, you just got to do it. Or you, you could spend the next six weeks watching the game. So. Yeah, I think you, you actually went on loan to Cambridge. I can't believe I've said that out loud. But you went on loan to Cambridge and, and then obviously played a few games towards the end of um, that season as well. Looking at the, the stats, I can't remember why, because you were in the team at Peachman and then suddenly you were at Cambridge on loan. Do you remember what, how that happened? Uh, yeah, I, I did my medial. Um, I... From memory as well, I we played Brighton away. I might have this a bit blurred, but if I had, we played Brighton away, um, and we were on the coach on the way home, sitting down. I stepped off the bus, and my medial 
I'd done my media. I couldn't tell you how in the game. I'd, I'd played 90 minutes. Um, I, to, to this day, people ask, I cannot tell you how I did it. Got off the bus and I was never the same again. Um, and then that was towards the end of the season. Probably didn't get it treated like I should have been and got it treated. It, it was all like, it would be okay. Um, we'll see how it is at the start of the season. But it wasn't. It wasn't the right. It wasn't the same. Uh, I remember w running round. What was your training ground? Uh, Woodlands or I? It was two. It was one at I and one at Caster. Caster. That was it. I remember running around the pitches at Caster. I, I, I can't run. Um, and then Shell said, look, I mean, ain't cleared up, go and get an injection. But the problem is, it was the start of the season. I need an injection, I take that. It still wasn't brilliant. Um, I got through bits and bobs, but I, I, was, I was not operating anywhere near what I was. Um, and then eventually, I just lost my place, couldn't get in the team. And then I had to find something else. But I went to Cambridge unfit, very unfit, because I just couldn't train. Um, and managed to put a few good results there. I remember we, we kept like four clean sheets, that's it. But in the end, I had to, I had to just leave. Um, the last two games, I couldn't. It wasn't fair to, to the lads at Cambridge to, to, for me to hobble around. Um, so I'm used to say, look, I'm feeling well. But I didn't want anyone to know about my knee being, um, being that bad. But I just made an excuse. I said, look, I can't play anymore. So they, they cancelled that. Um, and, and I knew in my head that was, that was it. You know what I mean? It eventually healed. Uh, but by that time, no one had had any more confidence in me as far as playing at a league. Uh, and then managed to get to Neneaton. Um, and then for the last pre-season game against Burton, I broke my ankle. And that really was the end of stuff. You know what I mean? So I just got back. My knee was feeling okay. And I broke my ankle. And then from then on, I just skipped from place to place. Um, but, I mean, it's nothing unusual. It's a story that follows a lot of people around. I mean, injuries. Um, but I had a good time of it. But, I mean, it's just cut short by three or four years. Yeah. And, and now, obviously, you know, speaking to you, you've had a, you dabbled in a few different things now. Tell us what you're up to now. Oh, wow. Um, originally, I did a uh, HND in sports and exercise sciences. And then I moved on to do a degree in sports coaching sciences with the intention of lecturing um, and coaching as well. But I, I couldn't, I didn't like lecturing. I didn't like, I was surprised by it. I didn't like it. Um, I, and it didn't last long with me. So I had to then regroup. Um, and as I was doing it, um, a friend turned around to me and said, do you want to become a surveyor? I can teach you how to do it. It's not something I'd ever thought about before. Um, a complete right angle to why I was going, nothing to do with what I'd studied or, or my previous experience, but I did it um, and I did, enjoyed it. It was something that was completely off the radar for me, um, good living, uh, and, but then that all came to an end uh, and now I've set up um, a sports massage company and a one-on-one -on -one coaching um, I want to be self-employed because I've got a little one that plays for Birmingham, the academy. So I want that freedom to um, be able to take him back and forward uh, and not be confined to office hours. Mm -hmm. So it's something that suits me. Uh, I ain't going to become a millionaire off it, but it's a decent living and it gives you that flexibility of not answering to anyone. So I can't ask for too much more, to be honest. And now you, you fingers crossed that you, you, your boy becomes the next... Uh... Simon Ray with a bit, a little more, bit more luck on the injury front. Uh, no, he's built differently for me, trust me. He is 100 times fitter, 100 times quicker, not nearly as strong, um, but has got the makings of doing what he wants if he keeps his attitude up. So he's only 12. Um, he's got a long, long road ahead, but he trains hard. He's got a great attitude um, and he's, uh, he's progressing nicely. So only time will tell. He's got a million hurdles to get over. And he needs a whole lot of luck. So, mm. and fingers crossed. And, and just finally, uh, when you go out of the game, do, do you miss it? Do, do you feel, uh, you know, because when, when people who are in football, they always talk about, you know, what it's like the dressing room is what they miss more than anything. Is it, is it something you think about now and think, oh, I wish I was still in that? Or do you feel it's that different stage? Um, I don't think I miss it like that. 
um, because my 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 memories towards the end were pain. It was painful. It was it was a, it was a chore. I was I was not conning people. That's the wrong word. But I was I'm pretending to do stuff that I couldn't do anymore, and it was kind of a relief for me. You know what I mean, as much as it's a good life, it's a good living. You meet some great lads, like I've said. Um, it was a relief to stop in the end because I was just in pain. I was taking way too many anti-inflammatories on a regular basis, which just, you know what I mean, you should not be doing. Um, so to me, it's a relief. Do I look back with some good fond memories? Yeah. Do I miss it? I can't say I do. Um, and if, I'd, if the ending had been different, I might be saying, yeah, I do miss it. But I do enjoy the coaching side. I do enjoy, love watching my boy play football. I still love football. Um, but in the end, it was a relief for me. And I wish I'd have had a better send off at, at Peterborough. I can't imagine, I can't remember what actually happened in there. Um, but I wish I'd had a chance to say goodbye a little bit better because uh, for me, I, I put a lot into it. Um, and uh, I earned some respect, I think, from the fans. Um, and it's something that I'll remember for, for a long time.